Hi, I'm Pat McGrew, and I'm here for the second edition of the Erasma Dialogues. I am the production mail evangelist for the Inkjet Group, and I've been working with the Erasma team. In this edition, we're going to talk about what a pilot looks like and what you need to do to engage with Erasmo on behalf of your customer. We're going to start off with the basics. Let's uh, do a quick review of what Erasmo is. It's an augmented reality technology that is designed to link print and pixel. So in most applications, what we're going to find is that uh, the customer has some existing print content or they have content that they want to develop that they want to use as a trigger to link their client or their customer into some new interactive content. It might be video content, it might be 3D content, it might be gaming content, it might be music content, it might even be shopping cart content. It can be any of these things. The um, Erasma team will tell you that uh, they think of Erasma as a visual browser, uh, but in the marketplace I think you'll hear people refer to it as augmented reality. It was launched in June of 2011. It has seen more than 4 million downloads as either an iPhone, iPad, or, or Android app. It is in, uh, in live in more than 80 countries. So it is a robust, reliable platform that I think we can reliably take to our print customers with a, a great amount of confidence. Now it does rely on the cloud. So if you have a customer who's sensitive about their content and don't want to allow it to live on somebody else's cloud, then Erasmus may not be the technology for them. At the moment, all of the Erasmus content lives in the Erasmus cloud. The Erasma team is also award-winning, and this again may give your customers some level of confidence. They've won many awards for the uh, for the Erasma solution set, and and we think that going forward we're going to see them win many more because they continue to enhance it and expand it. Uh, they're very uh, widely known right now in uh, the, the publication space, but frankly, they are also developing a decent reputation in the education space as well. Uh, you may see uh, this brochure around. It's this one, Changing the Way You Interact with the World. Uh, this was developed for the Drupa Show, and as you may recall from a previous video, or maybe you've seen this uh, live and in person, it actually has information about how to download the, the app, and it has a number of trigger images and a little bit of text to tell you how those images work. I think that what you'll find overall is that the, the basic premise of Erasmus is fairly easy to understand. Uh, there is an image and you focus your smartphone enabled app or your tablet uh, enabled app uh, to the trigger image and it will take you to some net new content. From the standpoint of engaging with customer, however, it's a little bit trickier because while the technology is fairly well understood, there is more to it. From a strategic standpoint, before we introduce Erasmus technology to a customer, we want to take some smart steps. We want to make sure that we do an introductory meeting with them, and the introductory meeting should be the point where the HP team comes together with the primary stakeholders from the customer's team and talks about what Erasmus is, what it is not, uh, the way that we engage with Erasmus, what kind of resources are necessary to make sure that not just initial video content or 3D content or or uh, shopping cart content is available, but uh, to understand that it, it must be refreshed on a regular basis in order to make it a viable long-term application. It really shouldn't be looked at as a, as a one-shot kind of operation. Then we want to arrange a meeting with the Erasmus team. Again, there are six people uh, in the U.S. who are Erasmus reps who can come in and meet with us. Uh, there is also a marketing team based out of uh, San Francisco who's available to support us. So we want to engage our Erasmus team members to help us tell the story accurately and to help our customers understand what is the what's necessary on their side, what kind of technical resources are going to be available, and there will be a requirement for the customer to provide technical resources. There are requirements to develop the content that will be delivered, to decide on trigger images. There are best practices around trigger images and, and video content and how one introduces it then to the marketplace. Place where you intend to have it used. 
We s suggest that, that a, a good idea is a workshop on customer strategy. Once everybody understands what the real technical requirements are, the next piece is to have a workshop where uh, we can sit with the customer's team and say, what are the things you would like to do with this technology? What are the resources you have available? And let's build a list of, of options and, and build a wish list, if you will, of all the things you might like to do with Erasma, and then let us pick one. Let us call that the pilot, because we are going to need to set a pilot and plan a timeline that will make sense, and then actually go through the execution phase, where we build the video content, the linked content, where we build trigger images, we actually practice with it, uh, we socialize it within whatever our target pilot group is, and, and then we evaluate the results and take our learnings and then we rinse, slather, and repeat and do it again and again and again. And our goal, of course, is to see this grow long term. Now remember that at this time, Erasma is a free application. So anyone can download the, the, the information and uh, download the application, develop their own content, upload it, uh, link it to a trigger image, and away they go. There's no cost at all involved in that. But uh, as we start to look at, at 2013 and beyond, uh, we are looking at click revenue new models, and frankly, for any kind of enterprise that would want to take this technology on and make it part of their standard marketing mix, certainly uh, there's more to it than just using a free app. There, there needs to be a strategy behind it. So we talk about it in terms of crawl, walk, run, and the, the strategy that we're going to suggest is that you start with a simple implementation. And for some customers, they do this as an internal implementation where they link it with training material or they, they link it to something that will have sort of a limited visibility while they get used to it and play with it and, and become comfortable with the, the trigger images and become comfortable with developing the video content. Um, your walk step might be a rollout in a customer-facing pilot, and that might be, again, to a limited uh, group of customers, to customers of a specific product line or in a specific market. Uh, you might want to just draw a tight box around it, again, just to get experience and understand what the requirements are going to be from the support uh, perspective, from a, a content development perspective, and setting expectations in terms of the brand. And finally, at run, you want to build a repeatable, replicatable implementation, something that for the next two, three, four years, or until the next great technology comes along, you have the ability to continue to refresh and use to build the brand story. So that's our crawl, walk, run story. So thank you very much for spending some time. We hope that this gives you the basics of developing a pilot implementation. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask. I'm Pat Dot McGrew. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm McGrew at HP.com. I'm Pat McGrew for uh, Inkjet High Speed Production Solutions at HP. Thank you.